Now, this is a harder question. We can tell from the algebra that we have a much more complicated thing. We've got fractions now, which kind of add their own complexity. Uh, plus, we have a stipulation. X has to be greater than seven. So my normal move of picking X equals zero or X equals one isn't gonna work here. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it, there is a way that it'll work and we can just kind of go with it and see what happens. But I tend to follow whatever instructions I'm given. So I'm gonna do the next best thing. Let's just make X equal to eight. That also has the benefit of simplifying these little like parentheses terms because eight minus seven is one. So we don't have to deal with as much complexity. So even though we're not plugging in one, we kind of end up with one anyway. So let's just see what we get here. So this would be eight times eight, that's 64 times one minus three three times one over 16 minus 14. So there's a little work I would do on my scratch paper. This would be real work, but 64 minus three is 61 and 16 minus four is two. So that is a weird number. I could leave it at that. I don't need to deal with um, the, the fraction if I don't want to. I could turn it into a decimal, but I, I don't mind this because I, I can see from my answer choices that all of those are going to be fractions as well. So uh, maybe I'll have to simplify and then I can deal with the decimals, but for now I'm gonna just let it be. 61 over two, fine, it, it's, it's what it is. I can also see very quickly that some of these answer choices are not gonna work. So let's switch colors so we don't lose track of it. Once we make X eight, it's gonna be eight in all the choices. So this is gonna be eight minus seven that's one fifth. No, definitely not 61 halves. This is going to be 64 minus three over two. So that's 61 over two. That looks good, but we got to be careful. Occasionally what happens is multiple answers work. And this is a very complicated situation. So I can't really foresee what's going to happen. I have to try it. So this is, a, this is where it gets messy. So this is going to be eight times 64. Ugh minus three times eight, so that I can just do in my head. I don't need to write that one in. So that's 24. So that's 24 minus 14 all over 16 minus 14. So we have the two on the bottom. Here I would go to my calculator. I would, I'm not gonna go to Desmos here because I really just love entering basic arithmetic in this. So eight times 64 minus 24 minus 14 is 474. I had a feeling it would be big, so there you go, definitely not 61, so that's gone. Then we can do the same thing here. We uh, have eight times 64, we can do that one already. That's 512 minus 24 minus 77 over again, 16 minus 14. So we have the two. So 512 minus 24 minus 77, again, I think it's way too big. Yeah, 411. So that's that. Now. I don't think that that's so bad. There is a way to do this uh, if you kind of see the algebra, right? So we could factor out X minus seven and say, oh, okay, now X minus seven can be removed from everything. And what are we left with? We're left with eight X minus three over two, which is exactly what it B is, right? So yes, in this case, that is easier. That algebra is easier and faster than all this arithmetizing. But here's the catch. How long will it take you to see that easy move? Because it's not a shortcut if it takes you three minutes of staring at the question for the shortcut to come into your brain, right? So this is always the problem with algebra and why I just default to arithmetize is I'm worried that I will spend so long thinking of the shortcut that it's not a shortcut anymore. Whereas arithmetize, I know pretty quickly that simple numbers are gonna work. I can start plugging things in the calculator. Basically, as soon as I see a question like this, I I'm already starting to solve it. So there's no lag time where I try to figure out what the first step is gonna be. My first step is make X8 and then start to simplify things. Um, so, you know, the point of this exercise is not to say in every situation where you can arithmetize, you should. It's to start to give you a sense of where those decision points are gonna be. And if you look at a question for five seconds and then notice the, the trick, great. Of course, you've gotta be right. If it's, if it's really a shortcut, then great. But a lot of times the SAT gives us these kind of fake shortcuts that are just traps. And so that's the other thing is how good are you at knowing the difference between a real shortcut and a fake shortcut? I don't know. With arithmetize, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So try to start to think about your own weaknesses and your own abilities and try to find the strategy that is going to maximize your points, especially on stuff like this. Basically, on the SAT, you cannot get something like this wrong. So if you struggled with it, if you got it wrong, you got a problem. This is a must-get question if you're looking for any score 650 or better.